Okay, in this video we're going to look at CCD Stack 2. So let's start by opening some files. We're going to be using my recent files of the M57, the Ring Nebula. So let's locate those now. And Lyra. I'm going to be using the Luminous files. Let's select them all and open them. CCD Stack does take some time to open this many files at once. But one of the nice points of CCD stack is this image manager, which you can see here at the top right corner. Here are the images loaded up in the image manager and we're on image number oh, I think that's 20 last of the few these are quite warm because during the night as it approached twilight the background started to warm up let's go back to number one Here you can see it's a much darker image. The uh, hot spot in the middle, of course, is normal vignetting, which you get with most optical systems. So that's nothing to worry about and can be flat fielded out of the images. Let's cycle through the images and decide whether or not they're to be included in the final stack. You can see that I had a little bit of drift in the pole with the polar alignment during the night, but the tracking itself is pretty good. So there is some shift from image to image but that won't concern us too much. What does concern us is as we go later on in the evening, you'll see that the background will heat up and become hotter. And I'll probably decide not to include those images in the final stack since they don't bring any additional data. You have to be a little bit critical here with your images. I know we spend a lot of time to gather the data, but sometimes putting bad data into a good stack is, is well, definitely not a good idea. And I know it's hard to, do, to decide to remove that data but it is necessary. So here now you can see the background is really starting to heat up, get much lighter from about image file 16 and onwards. And this is too much, so I'll decide not to include these in the stack. So here you just put N instead of yet, Y for yes, no, don't want to include that one either. And these will not be included in the final. In, in, these will not be included in the final image stack. So once you've cycled through your images, you have to set the image that you want to uh, register the rest against. For me, that'll be the first image. You can see here with my brighter stars that I have what we call blooming. Uh, basically I'm using an ST10 uh, camera and this camera has a non, has, does not have the non-anti-blooming gate so stars will bloom so I need an extra procedure. CCD stack has a nice procedure for this and it can remove blooms. There you go, remove blooms. So I'll apply that all to all the images before I start stacking. And you see it'll work through the image deck and find all the bloomed pixels in the image. It'll highlight them in red. You can see here now, the spike has now been highlighted in red, the vertical part. But now the next step is to interpolate the pixels. Interpolate means to replace the bloom parts of the image with pixels, values from the neighboring pixels. You might not need this step, it depends on your camera, your CCD camera. Whether or not it has an anti-blooming gate, yes or no, will depend on whether or not you need this step. So there you go, that's finished. And the stars, probably you need to go back into these with Photoshop and also do a little bit more remedial action to dress them up. But we'll see when it's finally stacked. So first part of stacking is registration. So again, I picked my first image and I want to register these all against that first image and I'm using the star snap. 
CCD stack will find stars in the field and match them in each of the images to align all the images in the stack. I have had this fail in the past, it depends on the amount of rotation from night to night, especially if you're setting up and tearing down your kit each day, that can happen. So one of the tricks to, do, to, to use to solve that is to use the FFT alignment first and then use the star snap alignment, that normally works in such situations. It takes a while to line all the images, so we'll skip ahead a little bit. It's important to remember that once this alignment's finished, you have to go to the final tab, apply, and you have to apply the alignment to all the stacks. If you don't apply the alignment, well, effectively you've not registered anything. That's the final step. And once you've done that final step, you'll come back to the, to the image. The next step in stacking is to normalize. I select auto here, but before you say OK, just drag a box over the background area. And what it'll do is it'll measure this, the statistics of this background area and try to match the background in all the images. This is an important step for the next part in the process. If you skip this step, the next part in the process will not work. This is where the magic of CCD stack happens. So here we're going to do a, a Sigma reject and we're going to apply it to the complete stack. What it's doing here now is comparing the stat to see the, the, the mean values of the pixels in the background. And by doing so in this complete stack of what, 16 images, it can decide what is noise, what is a bad pixel, what's a hot pixel, uh, what even is a, is a satellite hit or a plane strike across an image, and it will, it will try to reject that data. If the data is not the same in all 16 images, it will assume that this is some sort of random noise or an artifact in your image. And in a moment, you'll see it'll come up and highlight all the bad pixels. There is a tendency to panic once it uh, does this, because you'll see quite a lot of red pixels on your images. But remember, you've got 16 images, and not all, not all those pixels will be the same pixels in each of the 16 images. Otherwise, you'll end up with, a, with potential holes in the image data. So here's what I mean. So here you can see lots of red pixels that are going to be rejected from the final stack. Of course, this is just one image you're looking at and the other pixels in the other images hopefully will not be the same rejected pixels when you finally stack. Now you can come to the stacking part of this uh, for the image. Now if your uh, image stack is quite small, a uh, limited number of frames, then you might want to consider a sum. Sum is not always the best idea, the best one I tend to choose is to do a mean. So let's do a mean stack now. So stack and I'm going to select mean. So it's going to take the mean value of all the good pixels from all 16 images, rejecting what it's decided as bad pixels or random noise or wrong data in each of the frames. So we should end up with a nice clean image. Here it comes now. So this is our mean, the final image here. Now once you get to this point, I tend to tidy up and I will also um, clear the image stack because you've got quite a lot of images loaded here. So I will clear everything except this image, except the meme, which is what we wanted to get to anyway. So now I've got the mean loaded, I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to perform the next magic of CCD stack, deconvolution. So here you can see we've got a pretty reasonable image, but we can make it much better with deconvolution. Deconvolution in CCD stack is very nicely executed. One of the issues of deconvolution is getting the uh, PST, the point spread function measured. And what you find is CCD stack will select the, a couple of stars around where you want to deconvolve the image and it will measure the, the uh, PST and use positive constraints to stop the deconvolution going over the top. 
you know immediately when decon has gone over the top because you get black wings around all your stars. Uh, this is a very powerful technique. It's a little bit trial by error. For this nebula you saw perhaps quickly there I put in at 100 steps and it takes a while to do so we're jumping ahead there so it's, it's going ahead now with the deconvolution. And the deconvolution is basically guessing from that point spread function which is measuring from the stars how much blurring happened on the night of your imaging. And you can see already the, the image is getting tighter of the ring nebula. You see more detail in the bow coming out in the ring itself. That's just going ahead step by step and you can see the stars are getting tighter, the ring is getting more detailed and it's working its magic. For stars or globulars, be very careful with deconvolution. I would suggest starting with somewhere around 50 steps and preferably, well, lowering it. Stars are very difficult to deconvolve, but nebulas can take more deconvolution steps being extended objects. So we're approaching the end of this now, and we'll have our deconvolved image. Okay, so there you go. Another nice function of CCD stack is the ability to blink images. So there you go, we're blinking now between the original mean and the new deconvolved mean. The stars are better, the, the details in the ring itself are much better, clearer. So we have a far better image now with deconvolution. Now, another thing you can do with CCD stack, once you have your final image and you're happy with it, is to save this, save this image, but here you go underneath, you can see save scale data, save this scale data. This is better than starting with just a black screen with Photoshop, because CCD stack in the main scales image is better than, uh, well, just starting straight off with Photoshop. So I would recommend saving a scaled image. And that's it. That's this uh, video on CCD stack. I hope you found some useful information here.